Hello everybody, I am just Lance and I would like to welcome all of you back for another video. Um, this video is part two of So You Want To Be A Wet Shaver. And I know at the end of part one, I went ahead and mentioned that I was going to go ahead in the next video, I was going to talk about razors and blades. However, I got thinking about it and I thought, man, you know what? There's one aspect of traditional wet shaving that a lot of people doesn't understand or needs to understand, and that's the lingo. So today we're going to talk about the lingo of traditional wet shaving. Um, for anyone who didn't see my first video in this series, um, I'm blind. I made this series for, I'm making this series of videos for not only the, the brand new to wet shaving guys and gals, um, which yes, women wet shave too. Um, people thinking about getting into this, but um, one of my big, big, uh, for one of the big things behind this series of videos is those who are like me, and that is blind. So, now that that's out of the way, I want to apologize for the length of time between this video and the last one in this series, and the length between just my last video period. Um, we've all been sick off and on around here. I've been having a lot of issues with my back of late. Um, I'm pretty much straightened out. So, anyhow, um, that's that. Anyways. So, when you're talking about lingo, and those of you that can see, I haven't shaven yet, um, for good reason. And that will come clear here in a bit. Anyways, so yeah, when it comes to lingo with wet shaving, they, a lot of people, they, they use certain, certain um, phrases that if you don't know what they're, you know, if you don't know what that means, you're going to kind of scratch your head and be like, oh, yeah. What? So, we're going to go ahead and, and look at those phrases. The first one is a very important phrase, and that is YMMV, or your mileage may vary. Traditional wet shaving, um, which is, um, I'll just call it wet shaving from here on out. Anyways, wet shaving this, this way with the uh, double edge, single edge, safety razor, straight razors, shaving brush, shaving soap or cream out of a tub um, and all that other stuff that we use in this hobby um, we use there's a lot of things that if you you know that is subjective um, pretty much most things in this is subjective um, shaving brushes not quite as much um, although there is quite a few different uh, their, you know, opinions about brushing uh, brushes, um, razors. Those are can be a bit subject, su subjective. Um, soaps and creams, they can. But one thing that really a lot of people's opinions vary on are razor blades. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why so many things are subjective. Um, your 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 beard. Some people have very coarse beards, very heavy beard growth. Others have very light beard growth and very, very thin uh, beard growth. Um, some people have skin that can pretty much take anything short of a blowtorch. Others has, you know, really sensitive skin. Um, Allergies, uh, that can be another thing. Um, some, some soaps or creams you can go ahead, lots of people can use them and have no problem. Others can put them on and all of a sudden their faces start to tingle or burn and, and you know, because they have a slight allergy to one of the ingredients in the soap. Um, the razor blades, um, what one person considers really mild razor blade, others will consider aggressive. What others consider an aggressive razor blade, um, others will consider mild. So, you know, um, there's a lot of people with different opinions about a lot of things of this. Um, so, that's where 
what they say when somebody says your YMMV or your mileage may vary. Um, it's true. It might. It probably will, as a matter of fact. Um, aggression and mild. It's exactly what it is. Um, if a razor or a razor blade is aggressive, then I mean it's it's just really going to get after it. Um, if it's really mild, not so much. Um, piff. P-I-F. Um, pay it forward. A lot of people, they'll piff others things. I've been piffed stuff. I've went ahead. I've been lucky enough to get uh, piffed or gifted, given, whatever you want to call it. Um, razors, brushes, um, soaps, creams, blades, um, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, a lot of people, they, they piff out stuff because in this hobby, you'll find a lot of people, they either just have way too much stuff and they want to thin it out and they say, hey, there's a new guy or a new gal. Let's go ahead and let's give him or her a bunch of stuff. Um, or they say, hey, um, you know, I've got a couple of subscribers out there that's ended up sending me stuff because uh, one guy sent me a box with about like a dozen razors, 12, 13 razors, because he just wanted to clean out and shaved in. Another guy, he sat there and he sent me, you know, a couple of packages so far, you know, um, um, with soaps. Um, he sent me a razor. He sent me brushes. He sent me blades. Um, so, you know, um, there's a lot of generous people in this hobby. Um, so, you know, if you get into it, you'll, you'll sit there and you'll probably find that out. So, Piff, pay it forward. Um, vintage, modern. Vintage is like your old, when it is, is your old stuff. Your old, oh, somebody's outside popping off fireworks. Anyways, um, you know, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, vintage and modern. Modern, um, you know, stuff that's sold now, being made now. Um, that's modern stuff. Um, there are some modern razors and stuff out there that's no longer made. Uh, vintage is your old stuff like your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, Gillette's, those are old vintage razors. The old vintage um, Schick Corona, Schick Injectors. That's all vintage stuff. So, you know, um, a lot of people use both vintage and modern. I do. Um, we won't cover anything in brushes or razors or anything other than that because those will be in later videos. Um, BSTs, buy, sell, and trade. Um, there's pages and forums out there for wet shavers where, you know, people, they sell stuff like, you know, it's just an online community of stuff and people selling their stuff. Um, so if you see a B, you know, you hear BST, that means buy, sell, and trade. Uh, more example, what shaving enablers buy, sell, and trade. Um, there's a few things on there that you might be confused of if you're new at this. One is if you see the, you know, it says whatever, blah, 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 blah. And then it says free, or it's got this really huge number. And if you're blind like me and use a screen reader, you hear like 9,438,563,495. You know, and... It's not the price of it, of course. It's just that they just punch in random numbers or a lot of times they just put free or they just punch in a bunch of nines, whatever. Um, and there are some phrases on the BSTs you have to be aware of. Um, WTT, want to trade. Uh, somebody might have a, you know, shave soap and aftershave set and they say, hey, you know what? I don't like the scent. I'd like to trade it for something, but whatever. Um, WTB, want to buy, they'll say, I'm looking for this item, and they'll put, you know, WTB. WTS, want to sell, they're saying, I want to sell this, and they'll say what it is. Um, ISO, in search of, they're all, I'm in search of this item. And so, that's pretty much what you got to look for on the BSTs, and one Word of advice, if you're new at this. Um, when you're on a BST, and you go ahead, if you got somebody that's pushing you to do PayPal, F&F, don't do it. 
just don't do it. Go with um, GNS, Goods and Services. Um, even if you got to pay the, the, the fees, it's well worth it because I've heard stories of somebody sitting there going ahead and getting burned, ending up going ahead and, and, and paying for a razor or soaps, whatever. And the item or items that they paid for through a person never comes. And, you know, and if it's through FNF, &F, friends and family on PayPal, then you're, you know, you're pretty much, you know, uh, SOL, shit out of luck. But if you do goods and services, you know, at least if you don't get it, you can contact PayPal and say, hey, I paid this much for this item. I never received it. Um, same if you're doing it through eBay. Um, eBay's a little bit better on, on, you know, protecting your customer, but always use goods and services unless it's somebody that you know or trust or that you see, you know, does a lot of, of uh, buying, selling, and trading in the, in the community. So, that's that. Um, Post shave, pre shave, real easy. Pre shave is anything you apply to your sh face before the shave. Post shave is anything you apply to your face after the shave. Um, is there anything else? Oh, yeah. One very important thing you need to be aware of is grain mapping. Um, that, that is important because when you're doing your passes, because with traditional wet shaving with this type of gear, you just don't do one pass and everything's gone. It takes two to three passes to really get that nice BBS or baby butt smooth or DFS damn fine shave that you're in search of. Now, that's why I've got, you know, several days grow. I don't know if you can hear it over the audio, but you can hear the rasp of my whiskers. Now, one way to do grain mapping, okay, because usually with me, I do three passes, four passes actually. Three passes, one with the grain, one across the grain, or with the grain, WTG, with the grain. Across the grain, ACTG, across the grain. And then one against the grain, ATG. And then I do a cleanup pass or pickups as some like to call it. Now, one way you can do that you can either use your fingers and for those of you that can't see I got my fingers up here by the top of my ears and for me my whiskers grow in a downward pattern so my width the grain would be moving the you know running the razor from the top of my ears down to my jawline and that would be with the grain then across the grain would be from the ears towards the nose and then against the grain would be from the jawline up here on my neck in the middle, my whiskers come in like an arrow on my neck. I've heard of people saying it comes in like a swirl or a star pattern. But for me, right below the chin, running down to that little notch in your chest, it's your clavicle area, it goes straight down and then off to the sides, it grows in at an angle. So it would be like kind of like an arrow. Now, one good way to make sure you're mapping out the pattern, the grain pattern on your face is with a cotton ball. I got a cotton ball here. I'm starting up by my ears. Now I'll get close enough to where hopefully you can hear it. You don't hear much when I'm going down. I know that's with the grain. And then when I go from the ear to the nose, a little resistance, not a much, not a whole lot, a little bit. So they're kind of folding over. But when I go from the neck up, I can feel the whiskers grabbing at that cotton ball. So, and then on my neck, same thing. In the middle, going down, and then going up. And then going at an angle. You don't hear nothing, but going up at an angle. So, yeah. So, that's that. Um... Proto lather, when you're, when you're building up your lather, that's like a real foamy lather. You might hear it, pre-lather, pro, proto lather. And it's just a foamy stuff, which is lousy for building a lather. Um, so you'd want to get that off of your brush and just start working your, your soap again. Uh, 
bowl lather, face lather. Bowl lather is where you build up a lather in your bowl. Face lather is where you build it up on your face. Um, anything else real quick? Um, feedback. When you hear somebody say, great audio feedback, you can actually hear the whiskers getting cut. So you'll sit there and you'll hear like a scraping sound. You'll actually hear it. So, and if you watched any of my other videos, if you subscribe to me, whatever, and watched any of my other videos, then you'll hear that audio feedback when I'm shaving. So anyways, yeah, that's pretty much, I figure, good for now. Um, my next video, I'll go ahead and, and we'll get into either brushes or razors and blades. Not sure yet which. Anyways, so that's it on that. Um, I hope I cleared up some, some things for y'all. Anyways, I hope y'all have a good one. I hope y'all been doing great. Um, take it easy, and I'll see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Oh, and before I forget, um, if you like this video, please subscribe. Likes, comments, always appreciated. I will always try and get back to you if you comment. Um, now and then I miss one here and there, but I always try and get back to the person. I at least give you a like or a love on the comment if you comment down below. Um, you know, and, and you know, smack that bell. That way you'll get notified of any, any, anything I release. And if you ever need to reach me for anything, anything at all, whether it's shave related, blindness related, whatever. My email address is all lowercase, just lance59 at gmail.com. Um, or message me here on YouTube. Anyways, y'all take it easy. Have a great one. Bye-bye now. Hey, everybody. As you can see, I just got a wonderful shave. Baby butt smooth all the way around. Anyways, um, the reason why I'm back real quick here at the end of the video is there was a couple of things I forgot. I can't remember. A couple of phrases that you might see is SOTD, shave of the day, or SOTN, shave of the night. Um, if you hear somebody saying, I found this in the wild, it's something they found out while they were out at the, thri at the you know, um, antique store, antique mall, um, yard sale, estate sale, wherever. Um, a couple other phrases that you need to know. RAD, R-A-D, Razor Acquisition Disorder. Um, at least that's what they call it. That's somebody that just buys razor after razor after razor after razor. Uh, bad, Brush Acquisition Disorder. That's a person that goes out and buys brush after brush after brush. Um, Unicorn, um, a razor, you know, usually it's a razor, you know, which is something that somebody thought they'd never get. For me, my unicorn is a 1973 third quarter, 73 or th 71, I forget which, yeah, 73, third quarter, um, Gillette Psychotech, which is a very hard razor to find. It was only made for prisons, mental homes, and hospitals. Uh, so that was one of my unicorns. I found it for five bucks, believe it or not, at a, at a, um, one of those places where you buy, you know, they sell antiques on commission. So I ended up getting, getting that. That was one of my unicorns. Um, so yeah, un, unobtainium. Um, it's something that's usually, un, unobtainium is usually something like a, a soap or a razor that's no longer made. Um, usually with the razors, it's usually something that's new, like uh, newer, like the Mula Jet, um, or a soap that hasn't been made for a bit. They might call it unobtainium. So, anyways, yeah. So that was that. I just want to go ahead and I just want to uh, put those last few things in. Anyways, y'all take it easy. Bye bye now.